Hey everybody, this is Greg. Today I'm going to show you in Power BI how to use hierarchies and set them up. Hierarchies are really great things. We use them all the time, everyone that uses computers. And uh, you can set them up in Power BI. And there's really uh, five different types of hierarchies. Uh, one is like your auto date hierarchy, which I've discussed in an earlier video. Another is an explicit hierarchy where you define the hierarchy prior to um, a developer using the hierarchy. And the third one is a on the fly hierarchy. And the last two, which I'm not going to discuss today because they're a, a lot more elaborate to set up, is the parent child and ragged hierarchies, which are one and the same in many, most, in many ways. Okay, but uh, what we're going to discuss now, as we see here, is the auto date hierarchy, explicit hierarchy, and on the fly hier hierarchy. Okay, so the auto date hierarchy, I'm going to go with really quick through this. And what this does, when you have the option set, um, when the option is set for auto date time, like so, I click that, say OK. Then I can come over into any table, any table, and it will automatically take any date column and create a hierarchy for you. Okay, so let's say, for example, I'm going to put in a matrix always is very nice to be able to see your hierarchy. So let's go ahead and just use the matrix and click on hierarchy. And it automatically creates a hierarchy. Okay, so you click there, you see quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, April, etc. Then you just drag your um, measure on. Okay, so there's your um, simple visual, and you're in business, right? <coughs> so that's how easy auto auto uh, auto date hierarchy is to set up. Okay, now let's talk about an explicit hierarchy. So in the explicit hierarchy, um, I'm going to go ahead and create it uh, here. Go to dim date, and we're going to... I'm going to go to the table, and I'm going to go to the dim date. I go to the model, and I will see dim date, and I'm going to create a hierarchy. The hierarchy I'm going to start with is just going to be a fiscal year. So I'm going to right click and say create hierarchy. Okay, so there's my hierarchy. And if I open that up, you'll see fiscal year sitting underneath it. From there, I'm going to pull in fiscal quarter, place it underneath, place it right on top here. Okay, and it puts it under there. That's good. Then I'm going to say fiscal, um, I'm just going to say month name. I'm going to place that again on the hierarchy. And it places at the third level. And we'll put date. And we'll put that on the hierarchy and place it. And there it is. So now we have a regular um, hierarchy. I'm just going to call it fiscal uh, that's fine. Fiscal calendar. Okay. All right, so now we got the fiscal calendar hierarchy, which we can see here. And what we're going to do next then is come back over the report. And now it's going to be persistent. That's going to be always the same. So let's go see what it looks like. So I come over here. I'm going to go to a matrix again. Um, I'm going to go to your dim date and I go down and now there's my fiscal calendar. I click on it and there's my visual, right? And I'll throw in a uh, sales amount. Okay, throw that in there. Oops, it's not where I want it. Sales amount. And we got our sales amount. So now we can just drill down. There's two. Four, okay, to October, November, December, and if I go to October, it's showing me the correct dates. Okay, so everything is good there. Okay, 
Okay, so now let's look at another case here. Let's say I want to take this, and I really don't want to see all these months, right? I want to, I mean, all these, these, this, this, I don't want to see this structure the way it is. So what I can do is I can create another hierarchy, okay, um, which might be the way to go here. So let's try that. So I want to create a hierarchy. I want to create another visual. Another matrix here. And this one I'm going to go ahead and throw my sales amount on. <coughs> and in this one, I just want to do month name. I want to use the month name. We got the whole thing here, right? But I don't want fiscal quarter, I don't want fiscal year. So now I'm using the hierarchy again and I got my order but when I come into February look what I get I get 2011 as I go down I keep going down on that same one I get 2012 2013 I don't want all that I when I get 2011 I want 2011 so if I wanted something more specific so that I could just show February 2011, then February, in that order. I might do something more like, I might come in into my record, and this is where you might use a calculated column. So I could go ahead and go into data, click on, right click and say new column. And in my new column, I'm going to do something, just concatenate. Uh, I'll call this full month name and in here I'm going to say uh, we're going to say fiscal year because this is even though it's a numeric it's going to uh, intrinsically convert this thing so instead of using a plus sign we'll use an ampersand and we'll say hyphen ampersand and left and that should be fine and there we go okay so now we're going back to our report and instead of using this structure, we're going to structure it um, this other way. Now, this is probably the structure we want our developers to use. So instead of, um, I'm going to create another one which says fiscal calendar. This says fiscal calendar, meaning the whole calendar. I'm going to create another one that just says month calendar. Okay, so I'm going to come back over to my relationship. I'm going to go into dim date. I'll go ahead and pick off my new uh, fiscal month name, right? I'm going to create a new hierarchy. I'll leave it with fiscal month name as a, as a name. And I'm going to come over here. And under that, we already see fiscal month name. And below that, I'm just going to go ahead and put my alternate key, which is here. Place that there, so as you can see, it can go on more than one. All it can be placed on more than one hierarchy. And I like that name, so I'm just going to say rename it to fiscal month name. And I find it a little redundant to use the word hierarchy after that because when you look at when the developers, report developers using this, they can see that that's a hierarchy. It's not like it's. Uh, anything special that you have to name the, hi the hierarchy when they come into their the label which we'll see in a second you'll see it you'll see it there so let's come over here uh, let's go ahead and, and un undo the calendar like that the fiscal calendar and let's now bring in the fiscal month name and look at the little icon that's the hierarchy okay that's all we need so I'm gonna click there and now we're in business so now when I say uh, let's see everything from April I'm just going to see April. When I say February 2010, I'm just going to see that, right? You're going to need to name the month name a little differently, okay, to get this effect. All right. So this works really well. Let's say we got, but this time, 
I want year by month, right? So I'm going to get rid of quarter, get rid of the alternate date, and I want my month name to be on the columns. So now I'm going to take just take that month name, delete that, and drag the month name into columns. So what's nice about this feature is I need to get rid of that, that, so let's leave month name. So now what you see here is a really nice effect. <coughs> where you can see the months across, right? So let's just show them all. And you can see all the months nicely presented across. That's where it's nice to have that name. Um, full name right okay nice matrix there okay and if you still want to throw in a little bit of more here you can put in come over and put in fiscal quarter and you put in a uh, full date might be is too much so put in fiscal quarter then so you can see then but when you bring in fiscal quarter you got to get rid of it down over here and now you can see by fiscal quarter if you break that out, which again is a nice feature. Okay, so we've been working a lot with hierarchies and lots of dates. All right, so I'm just going to go to a new page for this last one. I'm just going to copy this. All right, and now this visual is really nice, this technique is great because sometimes your hierarchy isn't always just like from one table. When you create a explicit hierarchy, you can't go and take this hierarchy here and go down to go over to customer and say, ah, oh, I want to put, uh, you know, total children in here into this calendar hierarchy, right? Can't do that. It's not going to let you. It ignores you. Postal code. It won't do it. Okay, if you want to put another one of these guys in, another one for the date dimension, it's happy to do that. Okay, which we're not going to keep. Okay, so what happens when we do want multiple? Um, you know, different, a hierarchy that transcends one table. Okay, well, it's really simple. And it's really cool. It's really great. So if I go ahead and I take a, go back to my matrix, and I pull in my fiscal month name, okay, so I got that hierarchy. Actually, I'm not even going to use a hierarchy in this case. I'm going to take this. I'm going to say, I want to see by region. So I'm going to click region. And I want to see my dim date. Uh, actually, yeah, my dim date by year. Let's say fiscal year. And I'm going to say, I want to see what my product sold, my product category sold. So I'm going across three different, three different, um, I notice I put products up here. I'm going to put products again, right to the, right in here. Okay, so what will happen, and then we'll go ahead and do a sales. It's going to show sales, okay? Okay, so what's great about this is that I can go ahead, let's collapse all. Start by the region, the country in this case, and just click on Canada. 
look at all the totals for Canada. Go to 2011 and say, oh, bikes sold. 2013, accessories, bikes. And you see how it all bubbles up? Now, you won't be able to do an explicit hierarchy for this. But it's still there for your developers with a you know little training. It's nothing much to it. And it's really hardly any training. Uh, they should know this. So basically, it automatically creates a custom on-the-fly hierarchy. And these things are really fantastic. Okay, this is fantastic to be able to drill across all your dimensions. <coughs> now, let's say you have Germany and you have the year and over here you have some budget or some goal for the year right and they're not doing goals by um, by product category they're doing goals for something else so there you might have some problems you might have to use some DAX uh, you might have a problem like you might get your totals here for sales amount fine but when it comes to this other column because this product cat this product dimension doesn't uh, doesn't have a relationship with budgets or goals or something or other um, some other fact table when you you know then you might have some problems with this you might have to do some DAX to work around it but in many where where by each of the um, columns you're using comes from all the dimensions that are attached to these different um, <coughs> metrics from the fact tables let's say you have different fact tables it will line it should line up very well okay um, so just be aware of that if you start seeing some weird numbers uh, it's probably because your model isn't set up either set up properly or it's just impossible you might have to use some DAX to you know, make some things uh, on you know hide the visibility of some in some areas okay so that's what I call the on-the-fly or custom hierarchies, and these are, again, very powerful. Okay, so that does it for hierarchies. Um, hope you enjoy this video and find it useful and insightful.